So I'm out on the Jigsa SF at the moment. And the Jigsa SF is the sports version of the Jigsa 250. Uh, this is a new model for Australia. Um, it's a new Lambs entry for Suzuki, so a very important one. This is a very, very popular bike in the Asia Pacific region. I recently got home from India and I'll tell you what, these things were everywhere, everywhere. They sell thousands of them a day. Um, so uh, they're made in India actually at uh, Suzuki's factory in the Chennai region. And they're a great little thing. So I've been riding this for about four or five hours today. I've done freeway, town, twisty roads. Um, and I'm pretty impressed by it, especially for the price point. Obviously, I'm a big dude, <laughs> um, and it's a small bike. But you know, if you're a if if you're a beginner or you're just after a fun commuter, it could be a really good thing. I'll just quickly run you through it. Full fairing, uh, like I said, conventional forks, single bi front caliper, uh, and a single front disc. We've got a 110 70 17 front tire. It is a brand I have not heard of, but I'm quite impressed by it, I have to tell you. Um, I'm surprised, I've been pushing it pretty hard today, but I haven't ridden it in the rain. It's got a belly pan, decent fairing, tiny, tiny little screen here. Mm, fairly high set clip on handlebars that are actually the same height as the naked version exactly. Um, but the mirrors are forward here, the mirrors are really good. Um, they fold as well and it's quite narrow, it's good for lane splitting. Um, very fuel efficient, I'm getting about four and a half litres per 100 k's out of it. There's a little engine there, it's got a nice finish on the clutch cover. Little fuel injected single cylinder, 250cc four stroke, six speed gearbox. It's got ABS, uh, the rear brake is not as powerful as I thought it would be, especially because it's a popular Indian market motorcycle and they love rear brake over there it's got a really small rear disc and not a very powerful rear brake but it's okay rubber mounted foot pegs plenty of ground clearance uh big bore suzuki style exhaust system pillion pegs here uh comfortable seat pillion seat grab rails now it's got two rear guards and i don't know why i can't explain what's going on there um, as you can see it's got pretty tall gearing around town but funnily enough when you get out on the open road you're only looking at a top speed of 145 kilometers an hour on the rev limiter and if you sit on 110 to 115 kilometers an hour you're right up near the red line peeling peg conventional gearbox of course one down five up no quick shifter or anything like that this has a shift problem it doesn't like shifting from second to third. Um, you have to take a few takes at that. O-ring chain. Um, quite a neat little thing though. Cable operated clutch. Standard switch gear. Nothing fancy. There's nothing much going on on the dash. It says, hey, go. Um, <laughs> and we've got two trip motors and a clock. Nothing else. Like I said, a very basic bike but it's been a good one. So have a quick look at the rear tire. So the rear tire is a, well, I can't see the size anywhere. Anyway, I'm just looking for the brand, M-R-F-R-E-V-Z-C. God, never heard of that. Okay, 150-60-17 rear tire, and I haven't heard of the brand before. But again, I'm fairly impressed. It's not a bad tire. I don't know what it's like in the rain, but yeah. Let's have a quick look under the seat. See if we've got any storage. I think it probably does. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, a toolkit in there. Um, and a little user manual. Okay. What's it like to ride? Okay, first of all, it's a talky little thing. It loves being between five and 7,000 RPM. 
like I said, the gearing's quite tall around town, but it still gets off the line really smoothly. The clutch action is really nice and smooth and light. The gearbox is light and shift. It doesn't like to shift from second to third. You have to roll off the throttle and get the selector fork to return and then you can try for third again. That happens a little bit, but apart from that, the gearbox has been really good. Very easy to find neutral. Um, and overall, a nice, smooth little engine. There are some vibrations through the pegs and bars in the higher RPM, as you would expect, but nothing really. It's not going to set the world on fire. I mean, it is what it is. It's not the most powerful um, 250 I've ever ridden, that's for sure but it's got quite a heavy flywheel effect and it does pull i mean i'm 100 kilos with gear on and this thing is you know it pulls my weight no worries out on the open highway sitting on 110 it's revving quite hard you would not do that all day so you wouldn't do like a 500 thousand kilometer day on this you'd probably damage the engine so it's only good for short i would say 20 minutes at a time on the open freeway here doesn't quite keep up with Australian traffic on the open roads you're really in the red line um, on it <laughs> uh, up on the big hills out on the open road I was shifting back to fifth and wide open throttle but around town absolute gem really good fun little engine brakes are good um, good strong initial bite actually I love those by brake calipers they're built by Brembo and I've always thought they were good I don't know if it's got sintered pads or not, but it has got strong initial bite and plenty of power when you squeeze it hard and lots of feel from that front end and that tyre. I'm, I'm quite impressed and surprised, like I said. The forks are fairly soft, um, but you can still brake hard. But the forks are quite soft, so they soak up all the bumps well. Um, and it's just, it's a very nice little front end, actually. And moving to the back, like I said, the rear brake's good around town but it does lack initial bite a bit, um, and I would like a more powerful rear brake um, on a bike like this, a commuter style bike. The rear shock's quite hard, um, <laughs> believe it or not. It's a little bit firm, even with me on it, um, and the bike sits quite tall at the back. That's one thing I didn't notice about it. It's got quite a high seat height for a learner bike. I mean, I'm tall and I've got long legs and it feels tall for me. And you're quite wedged in here. Um, it's more comfortable on this than the naked one, but you are quite wedged in here. The pillion's quite high there. The foot pegs are in a nice position and they're comfortable. Got soft rubber on top of them. The cockpit's a nice place to be. I wish the screen had a bit of a lip on it to give a bit of wind protection because there really isn't any. Um, I'll just jump on. But the handlebars are in a nice position. Like I said, it'd just be nice to have a bit of, you know, I don't know, a bit of a screen up about here, I reckon. That would be awesome. It's stylish. It's got nice finish. Bit of metallic flake in the paint. I would definitely get rid of this. <laughs> Overall, fun little bike. Good price. Good quality. Good stuff comes out of India. Handling wise, um, yeah, I'm enjoying myself on it just taking big wide arcs side to side it 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 doesn't steer super quick it's really stable uh so you need to use a bit of body english to get it over and it, and then it kind of does it's one of those bikes that just sort of does flop on its side a little bit and you need quite a bit of lean angle on it to get through the turns um so it feels quite tall and top heavy but it feels really good it feels really good you don't have to hang off it or any of that stuff it's not a moto gp bike you just sit on it and uh, lean into the corners, drop your shoulder and look through the turn. And I'm having a ball doing big wide arcs and I'm carrying a lot of corner speed today. Into the hairpins, I'm braking hard, back shifting fairly aggressively and not getting any rear wheel hop or anything like that. So it's a great bike for a learner to learn how to uh, corner well. Um, and you can hit bumps on it mid turn, it doesn't upset it. Braking mid turn doesn't make it stand up. It just kind of does everything right and nothing too spectacularly. Um, it's so far a really good bike. So I'll come back up here on the naked bike and we'll see what the difference is.
Righto guys, well here I am, back on the uh, naked version. And, you know, the differences are few, but the feeling and ride experience difference is huge. Um, it just feels like two different bikes completely, which is strange, obviously apart from the engine character. But even in saying that, the gearing feels lower on this, but I don't think it is, I think it's psychological. <laughs> Um, the forks feel a little bit firmer, but I don't think they are. It must just be the riding position. And um, again, like the fan model, it handles fantastic. Um, the only problem for me, I'm quite tall, 187 centimetres. This seat is, I'm very wedged in it. It's a real nut cracker for you fellas out there. Um, uh, and the pegs are quite high and the bars are close to you. so. I'm actually finding this ride, unfortunately, really quite uncomfortable. Um, wedged in there and the seats rock hard and very low. So it also feels like it's sloped down a lot more than the fared version. So I'll have to look into that. But yeah, look, I've had a ball on it. Obviously with the wider handlebars um, and the naked seating position, uh, it is super chuckable. It steers lightning fast. It's really good around town, but it's ultra, ultra fun in the twisties as well, just like the fared version. But you don't quite take those same big sweeping lines. Um, you just uh, kind of tend to ride it more street fightery and uh, chuck it around, so it'll more suit those people that like that style of bike. Bar heights are identical on the two bikes. Uh, these are just a lot wider and they're closer to you. Um, so there's quite a bend in your arms. Um, and aside from that, yeah, the, the seat seems to slope down. Maybe they've tried to make a lower seat by taking some out of the front. It feels narrow and firmer compared to the other seat. A equally as good brakes, really good bite, strong modulation. The tyres are great. As I said, I'm really surprised about these tyres. I haven't ridden them in the rain though, so I don't know what they're, what they're like in the wet. Just like on the other bike, I would like a little bit more rear braking power. Um, but overall, look, they're both fantastic bikes. It just depends on what style you like. I prefer the seating position of the fared version and I'm having more fun on the fared version, but I prefer the look of this one. So I mean, hey, it's up to you, ride them both. And uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Uh, let us know what you think of the bikes and you have a fantastic day. See you later.